Right, today I'm joined by Reese, who is out on his stroll, clearly. Um, and we're going to be chatting about the, the confusion that is Stevenage. Um, not the place, just the football team. So, firstly, Reese, thanks for coming on. Not a problem, thank you for having me. That's all right. Um, so, normally we do like a, a quick recap on, on what happened last season. But I feel it's going to be a bit of a longer chat with uh, with yourself today. So, how was last season for a Stevenage fan? Um, how do I sum that up in such few words? Um, we have more managers than wins, so I think comes out rather well. Um, yeah, it, it, it was a rough season. We had oh, so much optimism going into it. Everyone's was talking about some of the brilliant players we signed, and um, we, uh, we, it was just everything that could go wrong did go wrong, and we never really got out that hole. Some bad decisions were made, and it just kind of spiralled out of control, really. And before you know it, we're ten point ten points degree, and um, we're on our fourth manager of the season, and. Then the season gets called off. Um, it, it's probably the weirdest, most stressful, frustrating season in the history of football. I'm absolutely convinced. So what 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 went wrong? Because it was it was a season where you were so far adrift from everybody else. Sort of what what was it that that put you there? Well, we've just saw a, a, a lot of it goes down to the recruitment. Um, you look at a lot of the players we brought in on the face of it, they're excellent players. We look at Jim Parrots, for example, but sometimes you can maybe get a little tricked by the name of a player rather than if they fit into a certain system. Pre season didn't go so well. Um, there was huge fitness issues, we had an injury crisis. So we brought a whole, whole load of new players in, and then we have a squad of, I think it was 40 at one point. It was absolutely insane. Um, we actually picked up a bit under under Mark Sampson, but we um, had, had a few issues in, in, in the press there. Um, and then the very infamous Mr. Wesley come, come to rescue, um, but that didn't end so well either. No. Um, then your your sort of final manager of the season, who's still in charge, is Alex Revel. How many games did he actually get to play or get to have as manager? Yeah, so so he had two two games before the season got called off. We had a game against Crawley, which I don't want to say unlucky to lose, but. but we was I would say overall we wasn't um, outplayed by any means. We were we, if we got a result, I don't think many would moan. But um, then we faced Crow, who at that time was absolutely flying, and in my opinion, if the season carried on, would have won the league. So he, he had a rough start, but there were signs there that we could possibly get out of this. Um, you look at. You look at someone like Michael Flynn at Newport when he took over. Um, we were less points away from safety than they was uh, with more games to play. So it, it's very difficult. Yeah. Um, it does seem that it's a, it could be a good setup though because is it Russell Slade is also is Revels number two? Uh, so Russell Russell Slade um, was just come in on a temporary basis to help Revs because uh, him and Revs obviously know each other so well. But we had Lenny Lawrence coming now, who every, everyone who's been a football fan in the AFL knows who Lenny Lawrence is. He's um, quite I iconic, really, in AFL football, and he's helped so many managers, Ted Freeman, Michael Flynn. Uh, Paul Trollope at Bristol Road, there's right, so many managers. We brought him in to help Reds and uh, Mark Duncan is still still 
still at the club, which I think is a huge bonus to fight for a uh, controversy in my brain. Yeah, yeah, sort of all of that kind of didn't help because it all sort of seemed to kick off when you weren't playing well, things weren't going right, and then suddenly it all sort of Mark Sampson is in the press a lot. Yeah, uh, yeah, so so we had um it was it was a bad month to begin with last season um we didn't score till the 31st of, of august and it was just one thing after the other and then something come in and people underestimate how hard a job he had coming in so yeah. like i cannot begin to describe how some how bad some of the players Adam Malab, uh, Paul Taylor, or for North Houston, and it, it just builds up. And we had so much going on. There's the well documented um, stuff off the pitch that um, kind of interfered with his job. Um, but you look at his last 12 games, won five, drew five, lost two, and those two were against Peterborough and Swindon. Um, but things were kind of getting out of hand and we're, I think we had something ridiculous like eight draws in ten games at one point it, we yeah. just could, couldn't win under him um, but I'm not sure that's his fault but to still have him at the club I, th- I think Alex Ravel who's been in the game 20 years has said something the best coach he's ever worked with which is very high grade yeah yeah I think I mean Revel's known throughout sort of lower leagues and he, he knows what it takes to go up and to stay up in in especially leagues one and two. So I think he's a good sort of young, hungry manager to have in charge. Um, but I mean, as, as Walsall fans, we, we sort of knew you were in dire straits when you signed Simeon Jackson as a, as a opportunity to score some goals and get you out of the uh, <laughs> the rut that you were in. Yeah, that that was enough final choice. But at that point, we're I think we're five points to just at the bottom. We're we're not a big club. We don't we don't have lots of money. Um, so who who do you go for? Yeah. Like that window is so difficult, and um, it's just so difficult to know who you go for and who would actually want to come with the right attitude. And you don't want to get too broke because of the amount of players we had in the first place. I think overall that season, at least on the bench or named in a match day squad, you have 50 players. Um, Represent season is that season. So yeah, I mean we yeah. that was that was like us when we had Marston as manager. He, his solution was bring new players in, bring new players in, and I think we well, ended up playing yeah. something like it, it four nine players in a season. It's uh yeah, um right. So looking now, I'm guessing for the size of squad, there's been quite a few players leave. Yeah, just a, just a small few. Um, how, many, how many players actually? Twenty three in the end. Twenty two. Uh, well, we we offered one a contract, but he turned it down. But twenty twenty two, yeah. Wow. Um, I mean, I'm not going to try. I'm not going to ask you to name names because um, we'll be here all day. But you've obviously had a big turnover over the summer have you seen many come in or has it been a case of trimming the squad down to those that want to play want to fight and want to be there well we've uh, we've actually had 12 players on so far um and to be fair the majority actually come in when we didn't know which league we were in so yeah. that that's a huge that shows a good attitude certainly um we bought a nice mixture, but I also said that last season. But looking at it, we've got people like Luke Foster, Ben Coker, um, and then we've got some really exciting prospects from from the lower leagues. And I think the one thing Rebel wanted to recruit on was character, um, 
they all suit the system. It's very clear to see that. We have a system this year. So it, it does have a different feel to last season um, when we brought so many, so many players, brought so many players in. Um, it, it feels positive at the minute, which is a, which is credit to Ravel given um, the state of what happened last season. Yeah, I mean, like you said, you've got more like players that are kind of more sort of lower league household names in the likes of Prosser, but also one that he's managed to pick up that really could have even left the game after his injury is Romain Vince a lot. Yeah, I mean, I must credit our uh, recruitment this year overall, really. You've got so many players that you've arguably got players, in my opinion, in our squad that could, could have gone to League One. Um, I, I think Prosser was, he's, I know he's getting on a bit now, but he's one of the best of Mr. Hart in the league, in my opinion, as well. Um, We've kept some good players from last season too. Elliot List was scoring goals in League One with Gillingham. We've got Charlie Charlie Carter, who was our bright spark last season. You've got Scott Cuthbert with the experience. You've got so many. You've got a good blend, and um, it, it's certainly a very different feel to last season. Yeah, and that kind of, despite it not ending the way you'd want to, that kind of came through. So we're recording this on Sunday, uh, last or yesterday in your cup game against Portsmouth, who aren't aren't an easy game. No, no, it was it was a hard draw. Um, it was a hard, yeah, hard draw from the mo uh, from the word go. Really, we they were the penalty kick from the half final. Um, they were nearly a championship team, but um, I'd say we more than proved our worth. I was going to say, I mean, yeah, you'll look and go, we threw a, a 3-1 lead, but to draw in 90 minutes against Portsmouth, that's not, that's not a bad outing. Yeah, yeah, we, we went in an early, you went in a lead early on, so you knew they kind of had nothing to lose in the, in the kind of 18 minutes apart from go from it. I think in 45 minutes it was 3 1. I think if we go in at 3 1, it's certainly a different game. We got a penalty given against us, so then it momentum always switches. But they had some really good players. You've got uh, uh, Ronan Curtis, you've got John Marquis, who both scored. Yeah, these are top, top players. Um, yeah. But we more, to be honest, I felt, I didn't feel at any point we were. Cause playing against the top end League One team. I thought we more than proved our worth and a free all draw, okay. Don't want to concede three goals, but it, it's a more than respectable result. Yeah, but it's it's concerning if you're a Portsmouth fan because they, like you said, their aim is to get into the championship. Whereas your aim is let's just stay in the football league. I th- I th- I think our task this year is it's not I don't want to say it's not staying in the football league because overall we probably stay away from the relegation picture but I think this year it's just about going out there and show, showing off what we, we can do So looking, looking kind of, well, before we look at next season, um, what is your, your view on 
what's happened at Macclesfield. I mean, obviously it's kept you in, I mean, you, I can see the smile straight away, but um, it's kept you in League Two. Do you think what the punishment that they've received is fair? Do you, yeah, what's your sort of view on it, obviously from a Stevenage point of view? Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a mixed kind of question, really. I think if you don't pay your wages six times, I think it was six times a season, then yeah, like, you're not giving as much up. You're not really giving the court or the judge in the end much of an option. Um, it's a difficult situation because I have to for Macclesfield fans to, and all the supporters and the people that actually care, care for the club but I, they got given their punishment uh, which I think initially was two points and the report actually read if they got deducted more they would be relegated I don't see so we only deducted them two and in my opinion and in Plenty of others' opinion. I think the Grimsby chairman was quite vocal on it. You can't have your punishment reduced because it has a consequence. I, I actually read uh, the page, the report last night. Um, yeah, last night. And but since they've entered the EFL, which I think was two years ago now, they've committed 91 offences. Which yeah, which I think I think yeah. the thing that people will say is unfair is the way that it was done and it's the fact that for me if they if you don't pay wages from one month to the next the punishment should be exactly the same if you if the punishment is you're deducted seven points for not playing paying wages then the next time you do it it should be either seven points again or more i think the fact that they were getting a lower punishment for the same crime and then the efl going wait a sec we've we've not done this right and then deducting enough just to relegate them by what turned out to be half a point i think it it's the way that it was handled if yeah it, it's not been handled right i think between the season ending and us Finally, us both finally finding out what leagues were in was 20 weeks. Yeah. Uh, there was plenty of to every other team was preparing for the rest of the season. And obviously, we can make certain clubs open, but and Macclesfield do. But how can you properly prepare when you don't know what league you're in? I think, I think we know the EFL aren't exactly known for their competence. And no, the sensible decisions, but over, overall, I, I think you can't keep not paying wages, you can't keep offending and have no punishment. If I robbed your house, my punishment would be lessened because the COVID crisis made me poorer. Yeah, but it, it wouldn't. So, but then again, if you if you rob my house a second time. Would it be lessened because you've done it before? It wouldn't. Yeah, exactly. It would be. It would most likely be exactly the the same. It should be the same. It should be the same every time. But if I think that it was six times, uh, my figures are a little what might be a little off here, but it was six times they didn't pay their wages and they didn't get charged six times. Yeah. And it, um, like the last time was only a two-point deduction, and then you kind of think, well, what? Yeah, I think you summed it up with the EFL are known for acting like if if you could look at one case to sum up how the EFL respond to important decisions, look at how they've dealt with Macclesfield, and that pretty much sums them up. Yeah, uh, most definitely. I think if you actually read the original world report where they got deducted two points um the it's an afl report and some of the things read was quite beyond belief i don't think walt disney could have read some of what was on there i think the owner 
was found to have shoddy evidence and lied. But I think on the couch before they did, they found him to be a trustworthy character. I I don't know how that adds up, to be perfectly honest. I yeah. just, right, they're so, very contradictory um, as a whole. Um, yeah. There, there, there definitely needs to be some something sorted there because this issue is repeating itself. Look at Charlton. Look at what happened to Barry. Look at if you read the Barry statement. That is obviously Steve Dale's work, but that is also what the EFL have done to them. They've yeah, I, mean, I, I read well. the Barry statement that they made a couple of days ago, and to be quite honest, it 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 was difficult to read because of the way that they'd written it. But yeah, it was not. Um, Are we talking about the proms and the BBC at the end of this thing? Yeah, yeah. The the basically the bullet point of everyone that he was having a go at. It, it was just astonishing. He, yeah. he passed the fit and proper test. He had 17 businesses before that going to administration. Yeah. How were these people being allowed to take charge of football clubs? Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. Looking away from sort of Macclesfield and all of that, we touched, or well, you touched on it earlier. Obviously, the season that's about to start, many have predicted you to be going down, um, or at least be in the mix of going down. Um, do you feel that you can stay up? Do you think that after what, especially what you saw yesterday, do you feel right? We've got a team here that can go out and prove we deserved to be the ones that have been that have stayed up and we are more than worthy of being a League Two club? Um, I th- I, it, it's difficult. I think, I think personally there is enough to stay in the division, but I'm, I'm going to say that. I, I probably have read, uh, read some good glasses on, but Honestly, this is we have nothing to lose. As I said earlier, we have nothing to lose this season. If we talk about it, but if we do walk the walk of what Rebs has said, then I'm fairly confident we won't be in the relegation picture. I think it, it's almost meant to be some of, some of the story, really. Um, team stays up on the technicality and. Um, Gets promoted or something like that. I'm not saying we're getting promoted. That is not what I'm saying. <laughs> but it's, it, it just seems rather. But, um, I just think this is the year to prove people wrong. I think it's the year we can just be the players can be themselves. There's little pressure. They're going in with confidence. It's a brand new squad. Um, and. Looking at it, I, I'd like to say the squad has enough quality in it to stay up. Yeah. Great. Well, looking at, at the squad, um, obviously it's difficult because, like you said, your, your recruitment has been to assemble a squad that's effectively going to get you out of the National League. But now that squad is tasked with League Two football, or at least... There's a couple of players in there that might have been signed as the one thing. So who's sort of your who's your key player, and then who's your young hot prospect? Oh, um, this is a very good question. Um, looking at that midfield, I think we brought Elliot Osborne in from Stockport. I think he's going to be huge this year. Um, he scored. He scored many in pre-season. He won. He was in team of the season for the national league, and he's shown lots of quality. Um, I thought he was superb against Portsmouth yesterday. I think, given how poor the midfield was, yeah, uh, last year, I think the midfield was a real, real weak point. I think he's going to be huge, and but from the looks of things, he's certainly going to be one of the first names on the team sheet. Um, as for the younger, younger ones, um, Louis Fernandez last year made his debut at 17 and put in a string of good performances. 
um, and has the full faith of, of everyone, really, given how good he was last year. I think he's shown a lot of quality to play him in football. Um, we've got an exciting youth academy at Stevenage. Not many people recognise that. There is an exciting crop of, the, of youth come through. We took a player for 1.5 million a year a year ago, or two years ago. Um, so there's that we want to utilise as, as Rose but not as much as uh, Mamria did, certainly. Um, so yeah, that, that, I'd say those two mainly are, are the ones to keep an eye on throughout, throughout the season. Great. And then finally, if you were putting a bet on, which position are you going to finish this season? Um, I'd I'd say somewhere in the higher I'd say high mid table. I mean, probably top of the bottom half, if that makes sense. That kind of thing. Um, I think there's a lot of pressure on a lot of teams this year. Um, there's always a few surprises in there. Yeah. In that kind of bottom pack, I just think we as I said, we we have nothing to lose anymore. I think we've got good quality when we want to. I think, as we spoke about with Ravel, he knows League Two football like the back of his hand. I think we've got a good mix. So it's not going to be perfect. It is rough. After, it is going to be a bit rough after the season we had. Yeah. But I, I think we have enough, although that may be famous for us. But... Yeah. I think, I think the biggest thing for you is they've got to let, Revel have the season, even if even yeah, if it's not looking great. It's been such a changeover, and he's had to do so much for the club. Or as in, like you said, getting rid of twenty-two players. They've got to give him time to get this his group of players together, which isn't done now. He's still got a long way to go for sort of his. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. You can't on the point a manager who's in his first managerial job and expects success at the click of a finger. Yeah. Um, it is a process and now it's about rebuilding um, as a club really after everything that's gone on and it's very much a process with, with Gravel and I just hope he's given the time to do it because everything he's saying, everything he's doing in terms of transfer business, everything I've seen so far very, very positive. Great. Well, Reese, thank you for coming on and look forward to uh, playing against you this season. I would say you, but we don't have a very good record against you. No, which you we, my well, we, were, we were annoyed that we, we <laughs> that our game got called off for um, weather conditions and then... Um, and then it got cancelled because it was postponed into COVID. So we're looking forward to actually getting to play you away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we have a play against against Walsall. So it's so good. Yeah, right. So thank you for having me on. That's all right. And uh, we'll speak soon. Oh, well, speak, speak soon. Thank you.